Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. And if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. Last time we saw that there are several indeterminate forms where if they come up when you're trying to take a limit, you need to do something else. So zero over zero or infinity and over infinity. And by the way, the signs don't matter there. We do L'Hopital's rule. Then on the next couple videos we did, what you do when you have a product is you take the reciprocal of one of them. So you get zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And what you do for infinity minus infinity is you get a common denominator most of the time. Sometimes it involves uh, multiplying by a conjugate, but usually just a common denominator. Now, what we're gonna look at today is those exponential forms on the right. So what happens if we get zero to the zero power or infinity to the zero power or one to the infinity power? That's what we're gonna focus on today. Power indeterminate form. Okay, so for power indeterminate forms, there's basically a series of steps that we're going to apply every single time. The limit as x approaches zero from the right of x to the x power. What indeterminate form would we have if we tried to plug in at this moment? This is going to zero and this is going to zero. So we have a zero to the zero power indeterminate form. When I write capital I, capital F, that's indeterminate form. This is one of the three forms we're going to use this procedure for. Zero to the zero, infinity to the zero, or one to the infinity power. Remember, indeterminate means it tells us nothing. It's possible the limit doesn't exist. It's possible the limit does exist. We have to do something else to figure it out. Okay, so step one of the procedure tells us to let y equal that limit. y equals the limit as x approaches zero from the right of x to the x power. We're going to take on step two, the natural log of both sides. And because the natural log is a continuous function, the limit of the natural log is the same as the natural log of the limit. You can interchange those. So the third step is always to just bring that limit out front of the natural log. And then the fourth step is to rewrite it using the property of logarithms. So I'm going to write natural log of y equals the limit as x approaches zero from the right of bring the x out front x times the natural log of x. We now no longer have a zero to the zero power. We can reassess. So what would we get if we tried now to plug in zero? What kind of form would result? It would be zero times, yeah. So think about, the. do you remember the graph of the natural log function? What does it look like the limit as x approaches zero from the right would be from for that function? Negative infinity, very good. So we have a zero times infinity situation. When you have a zero times infinity pop up, we would like to rewrite it so that we can use L'Hopital's rule. And what are the only two forms we can use L'Hopital's rule for? Zero over zero and infinity over infinity. Remember multiplying two numbers together, like for example, if you have five times three, that's the same thing as dividing five by the reciprocal of three, which is five divided by one third. We could do the same thing with natural log of X uh, times X. I'm gonna change the order just because it's easier to think about that way. So if we think of this as natural log of X times X, then we can take the natural log and divide it by the reciprocal of X and that would still be the same thing. And by the way, this is step five, evaluating the limit. We're going to say the natural log of Y equals the limit as X approaches zero from the right of and then we're going to have natural log of x divided by 1 over x. By the way, we could also have done x divided by 1 over the natural log of x. However, in the next step, when we apply L'Hopital's rule, we have to take the derivative. And which derivative is easier to take? 1 over x or 1 over the natural log? 1 over x. So that's the reason why I go that way. It would not be wrong to do the other, but that's easier. Now we can see that if we were to try to plug zero in, 
we would get the natural log of zero coming in from the right, which is negative infinity. And we would get what here? Also infinity, that's right. Do you happen to know if it's positive or negative infinity? Does anyone know? It would be positive, yeah. And if, you're, if you wanna visualize the graph, that's one way to think about it. Remember the graph of y equals one over x, right? So the limit coming in from the right towards zero would be positive infinity. So now we know we have an infinity over infinity form. You can use L'Hopital's rule. So we are going to say that means that the natural log of y by L'Hopital's rule, write a capital L over the top when you're applying L'Hopital's rule, is equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right of, what's the derivative of the natural log of x? Good, one over x. And what's the derivative of one over x? Think of it as x to the negative one, right? Good, negative one over x squared. Okay, now let's simplify a bit. I'm going to think of it instead of dividing by negative one over x squared, let's think of it as multiplying by negative x squared. Good, I heard someone over there whisper it. Negative x. Okay, so that means that the limit is what? Zero. Okay, so, but we're not done because that's not actually the limit we were looking for but the limit we were looking for was y. So what we wanna find is y. So step six, you're actually gonna solve for y in this equation. So if the natural log of y is equal to zero, that's the same as saying log base e of y equals zero, right? Or in other words, e to the zero power equals y. So that means y is equal to one. That's the six step process. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video.